Okay, so we've done the setup, and now we can start building up our list of IPA symbols. In this video, we'll look at the consonants made at the lips and teeth. Okay, uh, now there are eight consonants to look at, and for each one of those, uh, we'll establish the IPA symbol, the official symbol to represent it. Uh, we'll give the phonetic description of the sound, and I'll identify some English words that have this sound in them. And as we go, uh, if, there's a, if it's a sound that you're familiar with, I encourage you to have a think about whether that sound, if it's a sound you're familiar with from your language, uh, have a look at, have a think about a word that has that sound in it from your language. Uh, this is the exercise that you just did in the first assignment, and we're going to be attaching the IPA symbols to them now. So let's get to it. Uh, you see here I've I've put in the sort of in dark the ones that we're going to be looking at. I've grayed out the ones that are uh, for other videos. So the lowercase p represents the p sound. Uh, and notice that I put slashes around phonetic characters. This is a really common practice in linguistics. Uh, we use slashes to indicate that I'm not using this letter in the normal written sense. I'm using it specifically as an IPA character to represent this exact sound. Okay, um, so this sound is, <clears throat> it's voiceless, uh, that means there's no vibration in the voice box when you're making the p, the p part of the sound. Uh, it's a stop, and that means while you're making the p, no air is passing through the mouth, and it's made at the lips. This is uh, really easy to notice, you're, you're closing your lips off when you make the p sound. Uh, and some words that have this sound include pot and apart and clip. Uh, it's common practice in phonetics to give examples of a sound at the start, middle, and end of a word, because in many languages, certain sounds change a little depending on where you find them. Uh, although some sounds, some languages, only have a particular sound at the beginning of a word, only in the middle, only at the end, they may not, it may not show up everywhere, so... Uh, anyway, uh, so remember that an IPA symbol can only ever represent one sound. Uh, it's not true of all writing systems. For example, in English, uh, the P shows up in some places where it's not making a P sound. Like these PH combinations, phone and graph, it's actually an F sound. So we would use the symbol to represent that sound if we're transcribing this in IPA. Uh, uh, and it's also silent in English in some places, like psychology. Uh, so if a sound is, <laughs> if a letter is silent, then we don't transcribe it phonetically, because we're transcribing the sounds that are actually pronounced, not the ones that are just uh, in the background there, not pronounced. Okay. Uh, the next uh, letter is lowercase b, which represents the b sound, so that's pretty straightforward. This sound is voiced, that is, there's vibration in the voice box, and otherwise it's like P. It's a stop, and it's made at the lips. And some words that have this sound include bit, rabbit, and cub. Now, notice in the word rabbit there are two Bs in the spelling, uh, but there's really only one B sound there, and it's not carried on for longer or anything, so in a phonetic transcription we would just use one B to represent the B in rabbit. Okay, so that's just another aspect of English spelling that uh, we're not going to carry through in our phonetic transcription. And B doesn't tend to represent other sounds, but it does sometimes show up as a silent letter in English writing, like in thumb and doubt. Uh, so w the B wouldn't show up in the phonetic transcription of those words. The next sound produced at the lips is the uh, one represented with a lowercase m. This is the m sound. Uh, just what you would expect. Uh, this sound is voiced, like the B. Uh, it's a nasal, which means that you're letting air through your nasal cavity as you make the N mm sound, and it is made at the lips again. Uh, and some words that have this sound, uh, mitten, pemmican, uh, and some, right? Uh, and that double M in pemmican, it's kind of like the double B that we just looked at in rabbit, uh, we wouldn't write two M's. Uh, the way that we pronounce pemmican in English isn't twice as much as the way we pronounce the, the M in mitten, for example. Uh, M is a pretty well-behaved letter in English. 
Uh, one thing to keep in mind though is that sometimes another sound can uh, become a bit like M. For example, the, the N in input, uh, if you're saying it quickly, input, you might close your lips during the N and make it into an M. Um, so that's something that you can be aware of. Um, <clears throat> uh, often one sound affects the sounds next to it uh, in that kind of way. So the P is labial, is, is made at the lips, and so it makes the N at the lips. So things that aren't M, usually when you see M in the spelling, it's an M. Uh, we have this word mnemonic, which is means a you know trick for memorizing something, uh, and that first M in mnemonic is silent. Uh, but I don't know if there are any other silent M's in English, so we don't have to worry about that too much. Um, the next sound, this one seems pretty innocent, but there are a couple things to look out for. Uh, the lowercase f is the th sound that we spell f in English and uh, many other languages. This is voiceless. We talked about that a bit before. It's a fricative, uh, right? So it's unlike the stops and the nasals we've been looking at. And uh, it is made with the lips and the teeth. So I've thrown it in this video about uh, sounds made at the lips, but it's a little bit different from the P and the B and the M, which are made just with the lips. F is with the lips and the teeth. And it's spelled uh, with a single F, with a PH, with a double F, sometimes GH, like in laugh or laughter, uh, and so on, right? Lots of different ways that we can spell it. Um, and the trickiest thing about this for English is that the word of is spelled with an F, but that's not a sound at the end, it's a v sound at the end, right? Uh, so in phonetic transcription, that's one of the ways that uh, people sometimes get caught out. The next symbol is V, and this is the sound that you expect. Uh, it's really similar to the, the F sound, uh, except that it's voiced. Uh, so like F, it's a fricative, and like F, it's made uh, by bringing the lower lip to the upper teeth. Uh, it's normally spelled V, uh, so we have vixen and cover and glove, but we also have the word of, uh, which is spelled with an F, but it's definitely a V sound. And the, the other way actually also happens when, when I say have to, I'm usually saying half with an F sound, have to, uh, not everyone does that, but I, I certainly do having grown up in, uh, Alberta. Uh, so that's something to watch out for. If you're transcribing English, uh, again, you know, your uh, other language that you're dealing with won't necessarily have all of these uh, weird spelling things. W is an interesting sound. We looked at that when we were uh, looking at the, the consonant chart in general. Uh, so W is voiced uh, and W is a, a glide. And remember, these are the sounds that they are consonants. They have some constriction in the vocal tract, but it's a little bit less than any other consonant. It's as little constriction as possible without being a vowel. And, and they kind of glide into vowels when we put them in context. Uh, and it's made, uh, remember, at the lips. We narrow the lips when we say w, but the back of the tongue also tends to go up and back a little bit uh, towards the soft palate. Uh, in English spelling, this is normally represented by a W, uh, sometimes a WH. We have when and where. Uh, in words like aware, there's a W. Quick, the QU sounds, uh, sequences, that U is usually standing in for a W uh, that we transcribe as a W. And there's some really weird ones like, uh, well, cow is, isn't that odd, uh, but plow is the same sound as cow, but instead of a W there, we have UGH spelling what we would transcribe with that W sound or w character and there's a lot of silent w's in english like in wrench wrist right uh, that kind of right um, right as in correct doesn't have a silent w of course uh, and wrong okay so <clears throat> uh, i'd like to finish off this video looking at a pair of sounds produced at the at the teeth and there are three things that make these sounds challenging. Uh, one is that they're, they're rare across the world's languages. 
Um, English happens to have them. Uh, some indigenous languages have them, so we're going to cover them. Uh, and the other, uh, the other thing is, well, the second thing is that the characters we use in the IPA, you're going to see them in a second, are odd. They're not part of our regular alphabet, uh, you know, the sort of 26-letter alphabet that people are accustomed to uh, in English. Uh, and the third thing is that they represent two different sounds, but in English they're spelled the same. They're both uh, the TH sounds. So here are the symbols. The one on the left uh, there, the sort of big O with a bar through it, uh, is theta. It's a, uh, from the Greek letter theta, and it represents the th sound that you get at the beginning of the word theta, or the word thick. Uh, and the one on the right uh, is known as ev, uh, and it's uh, used in Icelandic, for example. It actually used to be part of the English alphabet uh, back in Old English, hundreds and hundreds of years ago. Uh, and that represents the sound at the beginning of the word this. Okay, so the difference is that theta represents a voiceless sound and ev represents a voiced sound. Uh, other than that, they're, they're the same. Okay, so they both represent, they're both fricatives. Uh, and they're both produced at the teeth. We're putting the tongue right at the teeth or sometimes even between the teeth to make these sounds. Uh, examples of theta sound, we have uh, thick, ether, bath, and the ev sound is found in words like this, feather, lathe. Uh, I know that there are some indigenous languages um, where the, the the theta sound, the voiceless sound, is spelled th, and the ev sound is spelled dh. So there are languages that have these sounds that spell them a bit more sensibly than English, where it's just th. Uh, that comes from a time way back in Old English where they were just the same. Uh, English treated these just as variants of the same sound. Uh, anyway, so uh, there we have it. Uh, it's a tough pair to end this video on. Uh, but now we've made it through the, through eight of the consonants of English. Here's the chart. Let me just pull that up for you. Uh, we still have several consonants to go, and we'll cover the rest in the videos that follow. But before you go to the next video, think about which of these eight sounds you have in your language. Uh, how do you spell it in your language? Uh, and uh, yeah, start plugging away, plugging that into the second assignment, which is just taking the first assignment and. Uh, adding some IPA to it, to it. All right, that's all for now. See you in the next video.